everybody, and welcome again to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting people, topics, and businesses that I know you will find inspiring, interesting, and so much fun. And I'm your host, Ricky Smith. Okay, today, y'all, y'all have to understand, first of all, I am totally fangirling. So anybody want to be a public speaker, know a public speaker? Is there money in public speaking? Well, have I got a treat for you. Today, you are going to meet a world famous, and I'm not kidding, world famous public speaker, executive coach, author, and I'm not kidding, the coolest guy you will ever meet. Y'all say hello to my friend, John Spence. <laughs> Thank you, Ricky. That's quite the introduction. I hope I can live up to it. Oh, please, John, you already have. First of all, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it, my friend. Oh, it's my honor. It's fun to be with you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a blast as always. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So, John, we are going to talk about public speaking. First of all, you've been doing public speaking for a little while. 30 years, 29, 30 years. Holy cow. When you started public speaking, tell me a little bit what that was like. Uh, well, I got booed off the stage in my very first talk. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. Well, it, the, I was at a big conference and my boss had sent me and, because he couldn't go. And he told me he gave me the speech to read. And it was a whole bunch of names that I couldn't pronounce. They were, you know, uh, it was like Ricky Schmackenblock. And I, I mispronounced everything. And they just, I, I was starting to read it and they just shut the mic off. Uh, but later that night at dinner, the folks said it wasn't fair to you. You weren't prepared. You're, but, so one of the things I learned early is preparation breeds confidence and only talk about things you know about. Uh, at any time I've ever given a talk that didn't go well, it was a topic that I was trying to stretch on or I didn't know. And that is not a good uh, formula for success. Wow. I'm still stuck on somebody had the audacity to boo you. But when you got booed <laughs> off the stage, what did that do for you going forward? Uh, well, first of all, I didn't die. So I figured this is the worst that can happen. And, you know, luckily the people were really nice to me that night. So it brought up my confidence that it wasn't, it wasn't that I was a bad speaker per se. I just had a bad speech. Uh, and it did make me more nervous, but, and I still get nervous whether I talk to 10 people or 10,000 or 20,000, uh, but it made me understand that I needed to be exceedingly well prepared uh, and know what I was talking about. And if, as long as I did those two things, the rest of it should be okay. Wow, that's good. You hear as people say all the time, I would rather die than to stand up in front of people and speak. What do you tell people when you're training folks how to do public speaking? Um, to realize that everybody in the audience wants you to do well. They don't want to go to a bad talk. They, they're on your side. They're rooting for you. Uh, and if they showed up there, they're probably interested in what you're going to talk about. So you have a big group of people that want you to be successful and want to hear what you say. Uh, that makes it a lot easier. You're still getting, as I said, you still get nervous. You still get scared. That never goes away. Um, that just means you care and you want to do well. And it's, you know, it's anxiety and, and a little bit of stage fright, but that's good for you. Yeah, that, that's so cool. So when you were public speaking and you realized, I am going to make a living at this, did it come out the block at $10,000 a speech or what? No, I started off mostly, for, I was still doing other training and consulting and things. And I started off not making any money. And then what I found out is how I built it up is people started asking me to do more and more speeches. So I started charging more, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and it, until it, it got even to or replaced the training I was doing. Wow. Uh, and, and then it became about 80% of my business. 90% of my business was just giving speeches. Oh, my gosh. Now, in my introduction, and I wasn't kidding, you literally are world-renowned, world-known. Where is some of the funnest places that you've been to do a speak, to do a talk? Well, you and I know, you know that I travel a lot, usually more than 200 to 220 days a year worldwide. New Zealand by far is my favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, I go back to, I used to before the pandemic, go back every year for a month. Australia is fun. Uh, I love parts of Canada. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, there's so many places all over the world. We've been to Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, Hong Kong, uh, geez, probably 50 countries. And the best part is meeting the people. 
Mm -hmm. uh, finding out about other cultures, interesting things they're doing. I, I'm so lucky now. I have friends all over the world that I stay in touch with. And that's been one of the most touching and rewarding parts. So look, I'm a professional speaker. <laughs> Get it together, <laughs> sir. <laughs> uh, that's the best part, though, is all the friends you make. It's a, it's a ton of fun. I love it. I know one time, you know, you and I were chatting and one of the things that you said that really touched me is that when you go places, you make friends with the staff of the places that you speak. Talk yeah. about that. And why do you do that? Because they're helping you. They're, they're literally serving you. And it's my home away from home. I mean, there's sometimes when I go and I'm, I'm in a hotel for 10 days or 20 days and that becomes my family on the road. I, I don't like when I'm traveling. I try not to go out to dinner too much. So I usually cook in my room and I bring food in. And I'm, you know, if I go to breakfast every morning, I get to know people. But those are my family while I'm on the road. And I want to treat them with respect, kindness, and love. Yeah, I, I, that is so good. Because you hear about so many people, you know, a celebrity status. Because y'all, for real, he's literally a celebrity. I'm not kidding. So celebrity status, they go places and they treat the people so badly. And then they later show up on TikTok talking about the worst people I ever served. So yeah, I I meet those people backstage sometimes in the green room, and on stage they're funny, they're kind, they're sweet, they're stories about being kind to people. Then you go backstage and they're just terrible. <laughs> and you go, that was all an act. That was all just a performance. Uh, at heart, this is not a very nice person, but they're a very popular speaker. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? So, John, you know, you speak on specific things. Can you tell us a little bit about what it is that you speak about and who are the people that are looking for you to come and talk? Yeah, I speak mostly on business topics, leadership, future of business, business excellence, uh, you know, things that are going to help a company improve. So I, my speeches are between two things. They're either to major corporations with all their senior executives, maybe 500 or 1,000 people in the room, or to associations. I did the, the probably the most prestigious speech in the world is the uh, business round table or the um, million dollar round table. And that audience was 26,000 people. Wow. Yeah. I don't know 26,000 people, <laughs> let alone speak to that many. And you said earlier that you still get nervous. Oh, absolutely. So you're standing in front of 26,000 people. What do you do to get your nerves under control. Well, I, I was just, I'm just about as nervous doing that as I was. I spoke to the women's basketball team at a local college last week, 12 young ladies. I was sweating and nervous talking to them, but um, I've got a routine I go through. I look over my slides uh, and I listen to uh, classical music. I've got a soundtrack. I'm very relaxing. So I do breathing exercises. I try to get away from everybody. I go, I go sit in a corner and I just try to chill, listen to really relaxing music, look over my slides. Then about five minutes out, I shut everything down and just sit and wait. And I'll usually go look around the curtain and see what the audience looks like, uh, how big it is and how many people. And then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just, I'm ready to go at that point. And I also feel, you know, after years of doing this, I, I know what I'm going to speak about. I know it's probably going to be okay and be pretty successful. So I, I'm not overconfident, but I'm comfortable that I'll, I will be one of the better speakers there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I'm, you know, I, I feel confident going on stage that I'm going to deliver information that people want to hear. Yeah. And that's so good. You know, talk about deliver information that people want to hear, because many of us have heard lots of speakers mm -hmm. and we pick and choose who we want to go see for various reasons. What is it about you and your talk besides the content that people come for? Well, um, you know, I'm going to go back to what do I do before I, I go on stage. I also think to myself, I these people are my friends, and I try to, as much as I can, exude a, a, a genuine love and care for them. Mm. Uh, that's one of the things that gets me through a talk. I think it's that uh, I'm, I'm not a lot of fluff. I don't tell a lot of stories. I hit knowledge that people can use. Uh, mm. I'm fairly humorous on stage, part of nerves, uh, <laughs> self-deprecating always. And I don't have a scripted talk. I've got general things I want to talk about. So I don't look rehearsed because I'm not. I know the material. So I bounce around. I tell a joke. I, you know, I laugh at myself. Uh, and and I usually I do a lot of homework on the company I'm going to be in front of. So I can talk about things they know. I can mention people in their company. 
Uh, typically in the morning, I go have breakfast with a couple people and visit them. And that way I can say, you know, I was talking to Rickley, Ricky early this morning and she said, blah, blah, blah. So I can make a personal connection pretty quickly with the entire audience. Yeah, that's good. How important is it to make that personal connection when it comes to, you know, talking to these groups? It's, it's critical uh, it, because if they feel like you know them, which at some level you do, then they, then they know that you care about them and you're not just up there to give a talk, get some money and leave. Yeah, wow. You know, that is so good because so many of us that are public speakers are aspiring to be as amazingly famous as you are right now. Oh my gosh. You know, we, we get nervous and, you know, we, we do the same things. We do the homework, but always being able to talk to somebody who's been doing it longer and better really help. So I, I appreciate that so much. John, I know last time we, we had a conversation, you were getting ready to go do a talk to a group, an association that we all thought was so funny. Do you remember? If, if, I'm, if, if it's the one I'm remembering, it was the funeral director. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> and all my friends are like, knock them dead, <laughs> kill them. And I, I had, there was a hearse parked on the stage. I've never given a talk with a hearse on the stage, which I went over and leaned on and you know, talked around. <laughs> you leaned on the hearse. Yeah, they had it parked on the stage, so I walked over and put my arm on it, you know. Um, you know what's funny is they were some of the nicest people I've ever met, mm -hmm. and when you get them away from running funerals, they're a fun group. You know? Well, I guess yeah, I guess so. Be, yeah, well, they always have to be so serious all the time in their job. When you get them away from there, they're, they're fun people. <laughs> wow, that is insane. Y'all, look, I don't know if y'all are enjoying this as much as I am, but I know you are because John is so fun. But don't worry, John's information will be down in the description. So you'll have to hit him up at least and say hi and tell him that you saw him on here. I would appreciate that. And while you're here, don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to give us a thumbs up. It matters. So John, before I let you go, my friend... Game? We got to play a game, sir. <laughs> I, I hope I'm okay at this. I'm getting nervous awesome. like I'm about to give a speech. It's simple. No, no, no. The game is called This or That. I'm going to give you the choice of two different things and you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Okay. okay? All yep. right. You ready to play? Yes, I am. Let's do this. All right. <laughs> Flowers or plants? Flowers. Mm. Hotel or tent? Hotel. I, yeah, I can't see you out in a tent, John. Sorry. <laughs> well, no, I do a lot of camping and stuff. Just I prefer a hotel and a shower. Yeah, me too. Oh, my gosh. Water park or amusement park? Amusement park. Mm. Practical joker or I don't play like that? I don't play like that. I'm surprised. I don't like to, joking about me is fine. I don't joke about other people. I don't like to pull jokes on other people. Um, I never tease people or anything unless I really like them. Right. <laughs> and it's safe. But other than Thank that, you. practical jokes, joking, no, not me. For y'all that don't know, John messes with me all the time. I'm just putting that out there. So yeah. I'm in good company. It's because I like you. That's, and I am grateful. <laughs> Candlelight or moonlight? Moonlight. Ah, planner or make it up as you go both yeah i can see that <laughs> you're not getting this or that on that one yeah there's just both <laughs> go all day or i need a nap go all day i see that too okay so when you're speaking do you say pecan or pecan pecan I'm okay. from the south gotta have a yeah. pecan pie exactly see this is why i love you when you meet somebody what's the first thing you notice their eyes or their smile Eyes. Okay. And you yourself, are you a words of affirmation guy or are you an acts of service person? Act of service. Yeah, I could see that. And finally, John, what would you tell your younger self right now? Be sure and ask for help. Wow, that's huge. That's huge. We all get stuck right there. John, you did perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it wasn't, uh, I was afraid you were going to play, play a practical joke on me. So I'm glad yeah, I, made I don't play that. like that. I don't like practical jokes either. All right, everybody. That's it for this time. We want to thank John Spence for being with us. Yay! <laughs> and y'all, we'll see you next time on Extra.